excited to have you here. Um, I think before I forget later, I'll remind you about next month's program. Uh, some of you have picked up the program schedule. Some of you have it at home because you got it in the mail. But there's others of them, of them around. So if you see something like this and you want one, take it. Next month, um, I'm excited about next month's program too, so I want to remind you about that. I, March 27th, it's Tuesday evening, it's going to be here, and Phyllis Graber Jensen is going to talk about um, a big project that she's been involved with, um, getting the history and some oral histories of the Jewish merchants of Lisbon Street over the decades, and I'm really excited about that. She's been involved in a big project uh, with uh, University of Maine uh, Farmington. They've been working on this project for a while, so I'm really looking forward, and I'm really glad she's going to do that for us. So um, look forward to that, mark your calendars. Um, tonight I'm going to introduce you to David Garcelon, who you may or may not know. He's also on the board. And he's going to give you a little bit of information about one of the many exciting things that we're working on that I think may surprise you and may make you happy like it's making us happy. David? Thank you, Annette. Welcome, everyone. We're very happy to see you. Uh, the Anderscoggin Historical Society is become very ambitious in the last couple of years, and I think it's showing in the programming that's been done. One of the things that we are doing is working with Auburn Heritage Inc., who has been operating the Night House in Downing Shoe Shop, and the Anderson Historical Society, at their suggestion, is going to take that over. Uh, we're looking for approval from the city of Auburn, but we are quite sure we will get it. And it will be, it'll be uh, used in conjunction with walking tours and we will have we have this there are displays there already uh, very historic i left a card on everyone's chair to tell them a little about the house built in 1769 i believe uh, we are trying to make ourselves not only the historical society for the county <coughs> the area but we we really believe we have something to offer culturally and uh our history is our culture whether we like it or not. And it says a lot about us, and I think it says some wonderful things about us. We would encourage all of you to become members. Uh, we have a wonderful library, wonderful research facility, and we love to have members. Uh, we could talk forever about our history, and we hope you would like to do the same. Uh, we do have, we are going to start an ambitious fundraising program to support some of the things that we'd like to do. Uh, but I'm going to turn it back over to Annette, and she will introduce Doug. Thank you for coming. Uh, most of you know Doug Hodgkins. You know him from seeing him speak at other programs here. You know him from his 8, 9, 10. About the eighth. About eight. <laughs> um, books about historical aspects of the local area. I'm sure many of you have some of his books at home or have handled them wishing you had some. So we're delighted tonight that he's our speaker and that he's going to speak about the one that's hot off the press, about the presidential hopefuls and the presidential visits. Um, to the Lewiston Auburn area over the last many decades, and I think you'll find that entertaining, informative, enlightening, maybe challenging. And we're glad to have Doug here to speak with us. Welcome, Doug. I'm a little bit hemmed in here, but I need to be able to deal with the technology, and I'll have something that's uh, not very high-tech. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm so glad to see uh, so many of my 
uh, fans or friends uh, here and uh, I'm interested that, that so many of you are interested in presidential politics even though many people say that they're already tired of uh, what's been going on in the political arena. But uh, this is part of our process, our democratic process, and uh, part of it is that candidates and presidents uh, travel around to uh, various places in the country, and they even have come to Lewis and Auburn, Maine, and you'll be uh, probably fairly surprised at how many of those uh, uh, candidates uh, have uh, come. So this is a talk about the incumbent presidents who came, and there are not very many, uh, future presidents and past presidents uh, that visited Lewiston and Auburn, also uh, candidates for the office, party nominees, people who are seeking the nomination, and then a few extras uh, in the final chapter uh, that uh, I thought I should include for one reason or another. Um, uh, the most recent uh, visitor uh, was Ron Hall, January 27, February 11. Um, and uh, the book came out just before he came. <laughs> so it's already out of date. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that it would be uh, soon, because, uh, sooner or later, because uh, the candidates presumably will continue to come, and even presidents might uh, continue to come. But uh, the most uh, recent was Ron Paul, who came to the Ramada Inn on the 27th of January, and uh, came to the Androscoggin Republican Caucus uh, on at the Geiger Elementary School. Uh, so, what can we learn about this particular visit? Uh, and this will set many of the themes that I'm going to deal with. Uh, it's first of all, candidates seek the office. You say, well, of course they do. But in the 19th century, the uh, uh, candidates were very reserved. They may have behind the scenes, they <coughs> undoubtedly behind the scenes, tried to uh, win office. But it just was not uh, seemly to, uh, to actively seek the office. The office should seek the man and not the man. The office was the uh, tradition back then. Uh, so part of that is going around the country, uh, and Paul came here. Uh, the change in the nomination process. Before uh, 1970 or so, uh, the nomination process was primarily uh, at the national convention uh, with uh, the party, party leaders, uh, largely determining who the nominee would be. But after about 1970, the process changed. And there were only about 15 states that had primaries, presidential primaries. Uh, but after that, uh, it became a much more popular uh, process. And the candidates then go around to seek uh, uh, delegates to the uh, convention, however they may be chosen. The election calendar is, was important. Uh, it was important uh, until, when, when did this occur? Until about 1960, uh, in the sense that Maine had its elections uh, in September, and this was an incentive for candidates, or at least stump speakers, to come around to help out uh, local candidates. But in particular with regard to Paul, uh, our caucuses in Maine are quite early in the process well, so that things aren't settled yet and therefore uh, it's uh, worth coming to try to win some uh, uh, 
delegates. Uh, the caucus strategy, the fact that Maine has caucuses, that is, these meetings of members of the party who at a particular time and a particular place, that is, uh, it might be 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and the caucus itself may last for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. It's not just a simple process of coming in and out of the polling places. That's the nature of our caucus. And that means more committed people are more likely to uh, come. People who are willing to sit in chairs like these and, and uh, go through the process. Uh, and that, uh, Paul is, has been uh, using the caucus strategy, especially focusing on caucus states. <coughs> He, he probably doesn't really expect to win the nomination, but he wants something in terms of the, the uh, platform or whatever, and so he wants enough delegates so that he has a uh, chance to, to, to uh, do that. Do that. Uh, transportation. Uh, the techno transportation technology has uh, changed considerably. In uh, when, when George Washington went around the country, he was going by uh, horseback or, uh, or uh, a chaise or whatever. Uh, but then with, tra with the trains in particular, <coughs> candidates start to come. Uh, but still, they uh, don't come until uh, much later in any numbers. Uh, because uh, planes are available and cars are, are available. So that Ron Paul was able to come into the state, uh, to, to Bangor, and then go around in cars rapidly to various uh, cities and towns. So that on January 27th to 28th, he uh, w went to Bangor, came down to Lewiston, then Gorham, then back to Waterville, and Freeport, and Alfred. So, in, two days he was able to cover a number of meetings and stick around for a while, give speeches and also stick around to uh, muster the troops uh, to come to the caucus. And then population concentration. The fact that Lewis and Auburn are a concentration, I don't need to go into that, uh, means that uh, there are facilities, uh, places to hold rallies, uh, and a lot of people. Uh, they're not likely to uh, go to uh, smaller towns. Incumbent presidents who came only four, only four, uh, and only after 1900, uh, Teddy Roosevelt came. Uh, and then he came back several times, and we'll see that. Uh, William Howard Taft uh, and uh, Lyndon Bain Johnson and George H.W. Bush. Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he uh, was hosted by Senator William P. Fry, who was the president pro tem of the United States Senate. A pretty important person in Washington. Uh, it, that isn't a particularly important office, but he had the seniority and, and was uh, quite well liked. And so uh, Teddy Roosevelt probably felt uh, somewhat beholden to him in some way and might have come for that. Uh, Roosevelt arrived by train at the Auburn uh, Main Central Railroad Depot, which was uh, on near Court Street. Uh, near Court Street, where Railroad Street is, that goes into, is it Hanford or Shaw? Is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm a Lewiston guy, so I'm not sure about <laughs> this. Uh, and uh, so uh, he got off the train there and then uh, went, uh, there were 11 carriages in the parade.